What's going on guys, it's Brainbean here again, and today it's the battle of the flagships as we take a look at Corsair's K100 versus Razer's Huntsman Elite V2 Analog. Now, I know sometimes comparisons like this can go a bit long, so I'm gonna try to make this as short and sweet as possible, go over all the important differences, and then give you my overall opinion at the end, but if you want, really in-depth reviews on either of these keyboards to really learn more about them. I'll have those linked down in the description for you, but with that, let's check these out. I wanna start off by mentioning that both of these keyboards are very expensive, with the Razer Huntsman Elite V2 coming in at 250 bucks and the Corsair K100 coming in at $230. Now with that in mind, looking at overall construction, these are both full-size gaming keyboards. The Corsair K100 has the larger footprint than the Huntsman, but only by about an inch or so. Both have an exposed switch design over a metal top plate. The K100 has a nice looking brushed aluminum, while Razer's is a flat matte black. I think Corsair's looks a little bit nicer, but Razer's is definitely easier to keep clean. Both boards come with a detachable wrist rest, which is the best that either company has put out yet. Razor's is a little bit larger and a bit more soft feeling, but the leatherette on Razor's does feel noticeably thinner than Corsair's, while Corsair's wrist rest is a little bit less wide, but it does feel like a higher quality piece. I think Razor's wrist rest is going to accommodate a larger variety of hand sizes, but Corsair's does feel like it's going to hold up a little bit better over time. Both keyboards have dedicated media keys, with Razer having four buttons and their digital dial, while Corsair's has four keys and a metal scroll wheel. I personally like the look and feel of Corsair's a little bit more, but they're basically going to perform the same functions. Razer's digital dial can be bound to other functions in Synapse, but it's not really that convenient to use. Both boards have USB pass-through, with Corsair's being at the back center of the keyboard and Razer's being at the top left side. Both get the job done, I think, but I do kind of like Razer's placement here a little bit better. Both boards have full RGB, which includes media keys and logos in Corsair's case. The Huntsman Elite has a light bar that wraps around three sides of the board as well as the wrist rest, while the K100 has a light bar that goes around three sides of the keyboard. I like the look and styling of Corsair's a little bit more here, but ultimately they're going to achieve the same effect. The wrist rest on the Huntsman has that cool lighting around it as well, but really I'd say it's all down to personal preference in this category. Both boards' respective softwares are going to provide very similar experiences in terms of customization. Razer does have the edge for in-game effects with a huge library of supported games, while Corsair's titles are definitely the less popular games, but if that aspect doesn't really matter to you, they're both going to get the job done. Corsair's IQ control wheel is a new feature introduced with the K100 that for me does border on being gimmicky, but it also provides some useful functions as well. It allows for on-the-fly adjustments of things like brightness, app switching, and zoom controls, and it can also be bound to in-game controls as well. Corsair also has their Axon processor introduced with this keyboard, which allows you to save up to a staggering 200 onboard profiles and increases the board's polling rate up to 4000 Hz. The K100 also gives you 6 dedicated macro keys, which depending on your preference could be a plus. Personally, I like dedicated macro keys, so it is a welcomed addition for me. And as usual, Corsair also throws in a couple of sets of textured keycaps. Both boards now come in standard layouts, thank god, and include PBT keycap stock, which is nice. Razors are in line with what we've seen with their previous releases, clean and simple, but the lighting does come in a little bit muted on these caps. You'll also notice that Corsair has changed their font to be a little bit more palatable and revamped their stabilizers to be much better than before. Now looking at the switches, both boards offer very limited, very gaming focused options here. The Huntsman Elite V2 comes with Razer's new analog switches, which are linear. These have dynamic actuation points, meaning that you can change their actuation on the fly, ranging anywhere from 1.5 millimeters all the way down to 3.6 millimeters. There's also a nice force curve on these switches too, ranging from 54 grams all the way down to 74 grams at bottom out. You can also use these analog switches for pressure sensitive inputs, very similar to how a joystick works as well, and they do have the ability to have dual actuation commands too. Razer also reduced the rattly sound that would come from these baked in stabilizers on the switches with this release. If you want to learn more about these switches, you can check out my full in-depth review of the Huntsman Analog V2 down in the description. Corsair offers the K100 in both Cherry MX Speed and their optical OPX switch. Now the strange thing for me here is that both of these are linear switch options with super short actuations with the Cherry MX Speed being 1.2 millimeters and the OPX coming in at just one millimeter. Both are linear, so really the only difference is that the OPX is optical, and in my mind that just makes this really redundant. Getting rid of the Cherry MX Speed and having a clicky or tactile option definitely would have made a lot more sense in my opinion. 
Either way, considering that both boards only offer linear switches, I think in the switch department, Razer comes ahead hands down with the versatility that you get with the analog switches, which doesn't force a super short actuation on you, which some people definitely don't like, myself included. And just so you can hear how the switches and stabilizers and keycaps and all that in the total package sound on these boards, here is a quick side-by-side -side sound comparison of the analog switches in the Huntsman V2 analog and the OPX switches in the K100. So to sum it all up, I think that Razer's analog switches offer a lot of customization and out of both of these keyboards, it's the better switch. I also think that the Huntsman Elite V2 is the cleaner looking board and has better in-game integration with RGB effects. That being said, I think the K100 overall is the better keyboard. It's slightly less expensive, it has better keycaps, stabilizers, a nicer looking top plate, better media keys, dedicated macro keys, and a nicer wrist rest. Now, realistically, if we're just looking at these keyboards for what they are, they are some of the best keyboards that either company has produced yet. But with the steady price creep we've been seeing with gaming brands, their keyboards are now coming really close to the price point of custom builds, which depending on your use case really would be the better investment. I've got a couple other videos I'll link down below for you guys going over gaming keyboards versus built keyboards and whether it's better for you to build or buy your next keyboard. Well, that's it for the comparison, guys. Let me know down in the comments which one of these keyboards you'd go with or what your other alternative would be. And if there's other comparisons you wanna see from me as well, you can leave those there too. If you made it this far into the video, I'd love to see you subscribe. I mean, what are you waiting for? And you can give this video a like to show your support. And of course, follow me over on Twitter at BrainBeanGaming for all of the updates for what's going on with the channel. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe out there, take care of each other, and I'll see you in the next one.